Hi, so good morning. Welcome to this another series lecture about electrical wiring simulator or EWS. Today we're going to perform the number six activity under this relays module. Okay, so let's click this one and then let's proceed to activity number six, which is entitled interlocking and holding relay. So in this particular activity, we will combine the two previous activities that we had, the holding and then the interlocking. So in this activity, we will combine the interlocking and holding contacts in this particular uh, diagram. So let's click the play and then normal mode. Okay, and then let's take a look at the wiring diagram here or the electrical diagram here. So we have here this uh, R1 and R2. So R1, this is the relay number one. So R1 and R1, so it means this is the uh, holding contact for this R1 here. Okay, and then R2, this normally open contact, which is connected in parallel with our PB3, is the holding contact for our R2 here. Okay, and then this uh, R2, normally close R2 here, this and R1 here, are the interlocking contacts for both this R1 and R2. And then this portion here, uh, this PL3, is just an indicator that this R1, since it will only close if this one is energized, so... Um, this one is an indicator that our R1 is uh, on, okay? And uh, our R2 here for uh, PL4 for our R2 here. Okay, so how does the system works? So if we click the, if we start this circuit breaker, okay, so PL3 and PL4 will be turned off because this is normally open, normally open contacts. However, if you press this PB2, okay, so the current now will now be able to flow through this first line here, hence energizing this R1 here. So if this one is energized, this one will close. Hence, we can now release our finger here because this will remain closed all the time. Okay, take note, if this one is energized, this one here is de-energized. Okay, so this one will open. So no matter how we click this PB3 here, the current will not be able to flow because of there is an open circuit here. So hence, this R2 will remain in its de-energized form. Okay, since this one is energized, this one will close, this one will open, this one will close, hence PL3 will turn on. Okay, so to stop this PL3 or to turn off this PL3 or to de-energize this R1, we have to press this PB1. So if we press this PB1, so the current now will not be able to flow through this line here. Okay, since this is an open contact already, open line, so this R1 will return to its de-energized state. This one will close, this one will open. So PL3 and PL4 are now turned off. So if we click this PB3, if we click this PB3, the current will be able to flow here, uh, energizing this R2. If we energize this R2, this one will close. If this one will close, the current can now flow through this path and also through this path here. So no matter if we release our finger in this PB3, the current can still flow through this path here. Okay, and then take note if this one is energized, this one will open. So no matter how we click this PB2, this R1 will remain in its de-energized state. Okay, so this one is activated, this one will close, this one will as is, this one will close. So if this one will close, this one will turn on. Okay, so if we want to stop this or turn off this PL4 or de-energize this R2, we have to click this PB1 here because the current is flowing through this line, this PB1 to this holding contact and then going back to that particular line. So we have to interrupt that path or connection. So how can we do that? By clicking this PB1. If we open this one, the current will not be able to flow through this uh, R2, hence it will return to its de-energized state. If it returns to its de-energized state, this one will open. Okay, this one will uh, close. This one will open. Okay, hence this PL4 will not will now be turned off. Okay, so let's wire the circuit first. So it seems uh, complicated, but take note, guys. If we want to wire the circuit, okay, and we want to wire the circuit only once, okay, we have to do it line per line one wire at a time so it means that we have to finish this line first okay and then let's do this and then let's do this and then add this holding contact then add this one and then add this one here okay and then we have to do it wire per wire so if you are doing it in a piece of paper so it would be easier if you can uh, put some mark here a check 
So it means you already wired that one, or you can check this one, wire this one, wire this one, wire this one, wire that one. Okay, so now let's start wiring. So from 24 volts to the input of the PB1. So from the 24 volts, the positive to the input of the PB1. Okay, and then the output of the PB1 to the input of the PB2. Output of the PB1, oops, to the input of the PB2. Next, the output of the PB2 to the 13 of the R1. Okay, output to the 13 of the, oops, 13 of the R1. Oh, what happened? Output to the 13 of the R1. Okay. So next, the 14 of the R1 to the 9 of the, take note, the R2. Okay, 14 to the 9 of the R2. 14, okay, to the 9 of the R2. And then, the 1 of the R2 going back to the negative part of the power supply. Okay, so this one here going back to the 1 of the power supply. Okay, so we're done with the first level. We can now connect this uh, holding contact here. So this 10 of the R1, we can directly connect it to the input of the PB2 and then 6 to the output of the PB2. So 10 of the R1, 10 to the input of the PB2. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We can click it directly. Okay, and then 10 and then the other one is the 6. Okay, take note that the 10 and 6 in our equivalent diagram, the 10 and 6 is the normally open pair. Okay, so the 6, which is in this particular, this part here, through the output. Okay, so this is quite similar to a puzzle. Output of the PB2. Okay, so next is we can connect the this one. So the PB3, the input of the PB3, we can connect it to the 10. Let's take a look. The input to the 10, so it would be easier. Okay, or we can connect this one also to the input of the PB2 or output of the PB1. Okay, so I think it would be easier if we connect it to the this 10 here. So the input of the PB3, Let's connect it to the 10 of this uh, R1 here. Okay, so this one, the input, connect it, oops. Input, let's connect it to the in 10 of this R1. Okay, so the input of the PB3 to the 10 of the R1, the output of the PB3 to the 13 of the R2. The output to the 13 of the 13 of the R2, okay, and then the 14 of the R2 to the 9 of the R1, 14 of the R2, uh, this is easy, 14 of the R2 to the 9 of the R1, okay, and then the 1 can be connected to the 1 of the R2 or through the negative portion here. Let's take a closer look. So, I think it would be easier if we connect it to the one of the R1. Okay, so we can do it this way. Okay, like that. Okay, so we're done with this uh, third rung here. We now connect this uh, holding contact for our R2, the 10 of our uh, R2 which is this one, okay, the 10. So we have to connect this one to the input of the PB3. Uh, I think that is doable. Mm -hmm. To the input of the PB3. Okay, and then the 6. The 6 of the R2 to the output of the PB3.
Okay, six of the out to the output of the PB3. Okay, I think we can turn it that way. Okay. To the output of the PB3. Okay. So we're done with this uh, fourth level. So let's connect the 11 of R1 to the which portion here to the 24 volts, or we can connect it to the input of the uh, PB1. Okay. So the 11 of this R1. The 11 of R1 is here. Oops. The 11 is here. So we can connect this one to the 24 volts. Or we can connect it here to the input of the PB1. Okay, let's try to connect it directly here to the input of the PB1. Okay. And then... And then the 7 of the R1 to the input of the PL3. The 7 of the R1, okay, which is there, and then PL3. The 7, which is this one, to the input of the PL3. Okay, and then the output of the PL3. Going back to this one here, the terminal of R1, R2, or the zero volts. I think it would be easier if you connect it to the terminal one of either R1 and R2. Okay, so the first terminal of R1 and R2 are this point here, one. So I think uh, we can connect it here. Okay. Okay, let's connect it directly. Okay, next. Uh, we should connect the 11 of the R2. Okay, which is the 11 of the R2 is around here. So we can connect it what, to the input of this R1 or to the 11 here. Uh, to the 11 here. But I think this is very uh, messy around here. So we will try to uh, loop around here. Okay. Let's try to connect it that way. So the 11... Eleven around here. Oops. Eleven. And then the input of that PB1. Okay. Next, for the seven of the R2, okay, to the input of the PL4. So seven of the R2 to the input of the PL4. Okay, so the 7 is around here to the input of the PL4. Let's connect it directly. Okay, zoom out. And then the PL4, okay, we can connect it directly to the, the output of the PL4. We can connect it directly to the output of this PL3 here. Or we can also connect it, since the output of the PL3 is connected to here, here, so we can connect it directly to 
the tar one here. Okay, so let's try to click the submit button to check the functionality of our circuit. So we will assume that if we start our simulation, there should be no PL, a pilot lamp that will be turned on. Okay, let's click the submit. Okay, pass 19, so many wires, but if we do it line per line, wire per wire, I think we can do it. Okay, so now let's try to uh, press this PB2. Okay, we should expect that a week this PL3 will turn on, this one will activate. Click and hold. If I release this one, so it remains in on state and then energized state. It means that the holding circuit is working correctly. However, if we press this PB3, okay, so no matter how we press the PB3, this uh, relay will remain turned off, de-energized, and then PL4 will remain turned off. Okay, so we have to press first this PB1 to turn it off. Okay, and then before we can press this PB3. Okay, if even if I release this one, it remains in its energized state and in its on state. So the holding contact around here is working properly. Then let's let's try if this R1 is also doing its job. So no matter how uh, this uh, R2 here is doing its job. So no matter how I press this one, the relay is not turning on. This R1 is not turning on because the R2 is turned on. Okay, and then the PL3 is also turned off. Okay, we can only turn this one on if we press this PB1 here, the stop button. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so in the next lecture, we will be doing the motor control circuit. So see you in the next lecture.